NASCAR Nextel Cup Racing on Fox is brought to you by The Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR. By Domino's, the official pizza of NASCAR. By Cialis. Cialis is here. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Cialis is right for you. And by Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. Beautiful snow-capped mountains. And here we are right in the middle of the desert, not far away. Yeah, 80 degrees down here and it's freezing to death up there. You can get anything you want in Vegas, including your choice of weather. Here's where the Coke family of drivers is running right now. Tony Stewart in second place, leading that group. He trails Matt Kenseth by three and a half seconds with Kevin Harvick 6.7 seconds back. Kurt Busch one second behind Harvick. And Casey Kane getting close to that fourth place car. Yeah, Kane is uh, just working himself right back up through there. He's got a good run off of turn two here. Here he comes. Boogity, boogity, boogity. And there he goes. He came within an eyelash of winning Rockingham yesterday. Same thing in the Bush race. He came within a whisker of winning that one. And here he started from the front row. And despite having to get in in the middle of the pack, keeps fighting his way back to the front. Larry, that bad boy's handling like I like from the handle. That's it. He don't have to worry a whole lot about his tires. But yeah, he, in 116 laps, he's never been lower than 10. Now he just passed Kurt Bush who also started up here on the front row, Dick Bergman. Well, if Kurt Busch is nothing else, Mike, he is a very funny guy. He just came on the radio a couple of minutes ago, and he asked his crew, where's Matt Kenseth going in such a hurry? Actually, his problem, Kurt Busch's problem, is the right rear corner of the race car. Uh, they had been hurting the right rear tire in practice, so this morning Jimmy Fennig put a setup under it that he thought would help preserve that right rear tire. It hasn't worked as well as they might like, and they're eating up right rear tires. That's Kurt Busch's big problem. Jeannie? Well, Ryan Newman said he has never had a right front tire blow and the car spin out. I guess there's a first time for everything. It had Newman pleading for air pressure in the tires. He said pretty sternly, guys, I can only save it so many times. Newman making two stops to take care of the repairs. The second for the crew to make sure they got the air pressure right. They're listening, Ryan. Steve? Jeannie, Jeremy Mayfield was in the top five early in this race, but he has dropped all the way to 22nd. He just told his crew moments ago, this car is going tight, then loose, tight, then loose. Something is not good on the chassis of this race car. There you see how he's dropped from 15th to 22nd in the middle of that pack. Casey Mears. Now here's another young driver, ex-open wheeler, off-roader, who's having quite a day, Larry. Yeah, I mean, he's been having quite a year already. He's had some good runs. He's up there in the ninth position. And you know, last year, even though it was only 15th, that was his best finish last year was right here at Las Vegas. So he likes this racetrack, but you just see him and that race team, their second year together, Jimmy Elledge, the crew chief, they're starting to really come together and figure these racetracks out. And I think that thing that we heard about, I heard the first time I heard about it was the Ryan Newman, the ABC program, Arca Bush and Cup. They kind of did that with Casey last year. I believe it's paying off for him this year. He is about a second behind the Miller Light number two of Rusty Wallace. Wallace running in eighth place. You know, that's what I like about some of these car owners like Chip Ganassi and some of these new car owners that have been around that haven't been in our sport that long, but been in other sports. 95. They seem to realize this guy's talented. Here's what he needs to make him get to the top. And, and giving him the time giving him a to chance. let that talent develop. Yeah, Mike. Elliot Sadler. Driving for Robert Yates. He is in seventh place. And let's get an update on Dale Earnhardt Jr. from Genie. Well, DW, you mentioned it earlier how it might be a little embarrassing to bring your car into the garage, but sometimes a glorified test session is better than staying out there and just going slower and slower till you are black flagged off. And that's pretty much what happened with the A car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Tony, your senior, coming on the radio suggesting that they come to the garage and make the changes. It was not received too well by Dale Jr. They let a few laps go by before they heard his decision, which was going to be yes regardless. It actually gave everybody in the pit box time to get all the way back down pit road, all the way back to the garage. And the work is going on right now. As you
you can expect. Junior not getting out of the car, doesn't have much to say. He's real quiet, so most of the crew is saying that may not be a good thing, but they are changing shocks, springs, and a sway bar adjustment, and the test session will get underway shortly. And, Daryl, I know you said you have went through that before, but have you ever went through it leading the points, just won the Daytona 500? I think that's where it's so tough on him in this group. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we really haven't talked about the ramifications of what this means to the point standings with Kenseth up here leading the race and uh, Junior, now they're only seven points apart. Junior in the garage, it's a big day. Especially this year, Daryl, because instead of 36 races, they're going to throw that caution flag after the 26th race of the season and only the top 10 will run for the championship. So here's Junior coming back in the race and he has given up 18 laps in addition to the four that he lost on I know, the racetrack. I know people maybe get tired of hearing me say it, but one of the things to win a championship is you got to minimize the times that you beat yourself. And that's what uh, that's what happens to you. You get to worrying about too many things and you end up beating yourself. You know, we talked about a guy that has won this race twice and he was making a run while ago. Jeff Burton in the 99 car, which watching his lap times, they fell off a quite a bit while ago. But now they've come back and Steve Burns, he needs to have a good run here because his first two finishes this year, 42nd and 37th. And Larry, as Mike Joy said, engine trouble on both of those races. You talked about it a while ago. I think the handling, a good handling car here, is like walking on a tightrope. You can go to loose, you can go to push, then you can get both the whole car just sliding. As of now, Dale Jr. would slip to seventh in the next Hell Cup point standings, coming in here with the lead. Kurt Busch, currently in sixth, Elliot Sadler seventh, and Rusty Wallace eighth is what you're looking at. You know, this, this beautiful complex with a super speedway, a drag strip, a dirt oval, and a paved oval, before they built it, all that was here was the little bull ring, the paved oval, and that's where Kurt Busch cut his teeth in little underpowered cars and moving his way on up to the big stuff and then to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the big time. Don't forget the air show. Get a, get a free air show all the time. Leader in heavy traffic. Rookie Brendan gone from right here in Las Vegas, right in the middle. Ricky Rudd trying to hang on and keep from being lapped by Matt Kenseth. Ryan Newman there as well. Not the only traffic jam we'll see today. 127 laps complete. Kenseth, your leader.